everyone, this is Helen Udegaard with Lightnings Ministries. I just want to share some thoughts that the Lord's been just dropping in my heart lately. I wrote it down on a blog and it's on my website, it's on my app. The Lord showed me that we must preach and we must manifest the Holy Spirit to this generation in this hour. I mean, people are so excited of what has been happening at Asbury University. And we know now those meetings stopped, the fire has spread, and the fires have gone to other universities, colleges, churches, and it's amazing that people are hungry. They're running to the altars. They're hungry for God. And, and the lost are finding Jesus. That's why it's being labeled as a second Jesus movement with the fire, with the fire of the Holy Ghost. It's happening right now and it's gonna spread. But at the same time, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is experiencing an awakening, a refiring, a reviving. The world is hungry for Jesus and the world is hungry for the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. When you get saved, we get Jesus, but we need to have the Holy Spirit in in, in dominion and authority and freely flowing in order to have the manifestations of the Holy Ghost. And the world is crying out for both. Well, why hasn't the church been manifesting the Holy Spirit? Now, we know that it's not true for everyone in the body of Christ, but for the majority, the church has been has received the Holy Spirit. Many in the body of Christ have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And yet there has been a lack of the manifestations of the presence and power of God. Sometimes there's little pockets over here, pockets over there. For the most part, there's been persecution that's come to the ministers, ministries, the believers that have said, hey, the greater one lives in us. We know who we are in Christ and we're gonna lay hands on the sick, we're gonna speak with new tongues, we're gonna flow in the gifts of the Spirit as He wills, and we're gonna see God change things because we're not gonna tolerate the works of the devil. When the Holy Spirit is in manifestation and flowing through the believer as it was ordained by God, it was His plan from the beginning. Jesus said, you go and wait in Jerusalem till you're endued with power not power to go sit in your prayer closet and just sit there all the time, but to have power to go and flow and release Jesus everywhere you go. Lay hands on the sick, expect miracles, expect signs and wonders. This is what we're seeing right now. There's a Jesus revolution going on, a Jesus movement, but there's also, for the church, there's an awakening. There's an awakening because they have fallen asleep. Much of the church has fallen asleep and been asleep. They've allowed, like the, like the Bible says, you know, the seed that went into ground where the tares came and the weeds came, the cares of this world choke out, choked out the word. And many believers have been uh, overcome in those areas. I wanna share this with you. There's too many sad, hopeless and depressed Christians out there. They would not be sad if they were celebrating the Holy Spirit, if they were celebrating His presence and His power that is already in them. Do you know that as believers, we don't need anything new? We already have the Holy Spirit in us. Jesus is not gonna to go to hell again, go, not gonna to go to the cross. He's not gonna die on the cross for you and me. He's not gonna shed his blood again. He's not gonna to go to hell again. And the Holy Spirit is not gonna come again the way he did in Acts 2. He will to those that come and ask, of, ask for the baptism, but once you've got it, you got it. You and I have received all the power there is to have in the Holy Spirit. And we are supposed to grow, grow, grow. So what does the church need to repent of? The church needs to repent of maybe leaving their first love, letting other things get in and choke out the word, choke out the life of God in them, in their lives. The world may need a Jesus, a second Jesus movement, but the church needs a Holy Spirit awakening that would make them move. None of us would have any time to be depressed if we were to stay on fire, on fire. Can, can, oh, just fanning that flame of the fire of God that's already in us and on us. We have, would have no time to be depressed. We would not be bored. Christians should never ever need a second Jesus movement to wake them up. The second Jesus movement is 
and for the lost to get saved. An awakening is for the church to wake up. And also, of course, an awakening means society will be affected by a manifest presence of God and the knowledge of God would, would just permeate society. There would be a knowing in the lost, in the world, that there is a God. Then they would come and run to the church and we need to have the goods. We need to have the goods to give them. This is what the Lord gave me as an example. It's like a married couple who have allowed their marriage to become dull and lifeless. They may look at a new young couple who are in love, vibrant, excited, and newly married, and even celebrate what they have. Well, that's really what the believers, those that have been saved for a long time, were seeing these young people run to the altar, hungry for Jesus, and it's the same thing. It's causing them to come alive as they're seeing these new, new births. Amen. The older couple, the ones that have been married longer, have everything that the other couple has, but they've allowed some things to shrivel up, become stagnant in their marriage. They may have even allowed some things to get into their marriage that they shouldn't have. Love and the qualities they once had are still in the relationship, but allowing wrong things in, which are destroyers of love, has, has brought a dullness, a, 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 a lifelessness, a lack of fire in their marriage. So now, now there's a need of repentance and for restoration. The Lord wants us to repent to, in order to get the full restoration process working in us so we can be restored back to the back to the newness of life of what it was like when we first got saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. We need to be excited for those who are accepting Jesus, running to the altar, and all these young people that are getting healed, healed of hurts and wounds and, and they're throwing away their paraphernalia and they're, and they're repenting of things that they've allowed to come in their lives. And the only reason they allowed those things is because there was a lack of Jesus in their life. There was no Jesus. So it's the same with the Christian who has the life of the Holy Spirit in them, but who has allowed things to get into their relationship with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. The life of the Holy Spirit is still in them with his presence and power, gifts, operations and fruit, but they have allowed them to become stagnant, dried up, shriveled up. Why? Because of a lack of honoring and staying in relationship with Him. Living a life in obedience to His Word and to His Spirit, in faith and in love. Jesus said in the book of Revelation, chapter two, verse four through five, that we need, the church needs to return back to their first love. Is this a picture of it or what? I thank God that Christians are waking up and getting on fire. But you know, they just need to, that there needs to be repentance and there needs to be a follow through now. Picking up those things that they know. They are the mature ones. They've heard, a, they've gotten a lot of word through the years. Now they need to walk in it and obey the Holy Spirit and stay on fire, stay in love with Jesus and just help this revival and awakening burn and go forth into the world. So let's keep praying for the fires of the Holy Spirit to keep burning. Let's keep praying for the church that she will be fully awakened, doing all she was ordained to do in this day and hour, because this is the church's finest hour. It is here. Let's fan the flames of revival and awakening. The church always had authority. The church always had the gifts. The church always had the power. The church always has the presence. The church always had the gifts of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit. It's time to repent, to get back to our first love, and to stir up the life of God that is in us, stir up the fire of God that is in us, and don't let it go out, but let it blaze in Jesus' name.